Good morning, Faith Lutheran Church. Good morning. Good morning. Good to have everybody here. Kind of a cool day for us. We're going to try to celebrate all the birthdays between January and June today. So we'll sing. Oh, well, we could do it just now. Nah, why not? Uh, so, who has been born between January 1st and June 3rd? Just stand up. Oh, yeah, why don't you stand up? We'll sing happy birthday to you. <laughs> All right. Erwin, when were you born? Nice to have you here. August. August? Oh, well, we'll catch you next. Okay, here we go. Happy birthday to you. Jennifer, is that your cake? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's a Jennifer Beal birthday cake. So really, really good. Um, let's see. Oh, this week is council. So we bumped it back a week. So just a kind of reminder there. Sewing or quilting. Yeah. Get it right. And uh, we do want to remember uh, Ned Morgan. He lost his son Lee. He had a doctor from Vietnam. He was in an automobile accident, so anyway, their arrangements aren't yet for the funeral, but uh, but do remember him and the family in your prayers. Today we're going to talk about uh, the importance of each person, how Jesus looks at us, and how we need to, you know, keep that in mind as we go through life. So let's stand in our first hymn. I forgot what it was. What is it? How firm a foundation. How firm a foundation. Ah, excellent. So we keep your foundation. Amen. Amen. 
Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of our neighbors. Merciful God, we, we confess that we have sinned, we have hurt our community, we have squandered your blessings, we have glorified your God. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. Righteous God, we, we confess that we have sinned, we have failed to be honest, we have lacked the courage to speak, we have spoken falsely. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. God is a cup of cold water when we thirst. God offers boundless grace when we fail. Claim the gift of God's mercy. Be freed and forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And uh, this is all out of his Abraham's tree there. 
Then he has a son, Isaac, who has two kids, and they didn't get along too well, because Jacob stole Esau's birthright. So they were twins too. They didn't get along. Kind of sad. So, but later they reconciled, so that was pretty cool. And then Jacob had a son, Joseph, and they didn't get along with brothers either. So they sold him into slavery. That's tough stuff. But he rose up to be uh, foremost in uh, right underneath Pharaoh in Egypt, so he saved the family, so it all worked out. I'm going to talk about that a little bit more later. And I'm just saying, it's not always easy to get along with family, and it's really good that you guys do. You know, not every family is like that. Okay? So, what we're encouraged to do is to be reconciled, but mainly what God wants us to do is no matter You've got a good family, but some other people don't, and maybe you'll run across them. And the main thing we've got to remember is that God, our Heavenly Father, does love us, so we got to hold to that, see? This universal parent that cares for us. And if we have that firm foundation, see, the trials we were talking about in that end, they're going to hit us in our lives, but we have that sure foundation to remember that we're awesome in the eyes of God, okay? And then we have a treasure in our brothers. <clears throat> and so that's why we're celebrating birthdays today. When did you get it for? Were you going? Yeah, what did you play? August. August. Oh, August 11th. Oh, we're pretty close together. That's kind of cool. So, anyway, well, we're not celebrating you today, so. <laughs> <laughs> we'll check you out next time. <laughs> okay. Well, but let's pray that we always remember that. Um, <laughs> God has given us birth and baptism, and we remember that. Lord, we do thank you so much for being a part of our lives, and uh, help us to remember that we are your own, your children, and that as you split the heavens open to say, this is my beloved son of Jesus, you say that to us as well, and we thank you for that. In your name we pray. Amen. <laughs> First reading is from Jeremiah. O Lord, you have enticed me, and I was enticed. You have overpowered me, and you have prevailed. I have become a laughingstock all day long. Everyone mocks me. For whenever I speak, I must cry out, I must shout violence and destruction. For the word of the Lord has become for me a reproach and derision all day long. If I say I will not mention him or speak any more in his name, then within me there is something like a burning fire shut up in my bones. I am weary with holding it in, and I cannot. For I hear many whispering, terror is all around, denounce him, let us denounce him. All my close friends are watching for me to stumble. Perhaps he can be enticed, and we can prevail against him, and take our revenge on him. But the Lord is with me like a dread warrior. Therefore, my persecutors will stumble, and they will not prevail. They will be greatly shamed, for they will not succeed. Their eternal dishonor will never be forgotten. O Lord of hosts, you test the righteous. You see the heart and the mind. Let me see your retribution upon them. For to you I have committed my cause. Sing to the Lord. Praise the Lord. For he has delivered the life of the needy from the hands of evildoers. Word of God. Word of life. Thanks be to God. Please read responsibly from Psalm 69. Surely for your sake I have suffered reproach, and shame has covered my face. I have become a stranger to my own children, and alien to my mother's children. Zeal for your house has eaten me up. The scorn of those who scorn you has fallen upon me. I have humbled myself and asked that I have to my Answer me, O Lord, for your love is kind, and your great compassion turn to me. I have not been replaced from your servant. Be swift and answer me, for I am. Draw near to me and redeem me, because of my enemies, deliver me.
Our next reading is from Romans. Should we continue in sin in order that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin go on living in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him, so that the body of sin might be destroyed, and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin, once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. Word of God, word of life. Thank you, God. I invite you to stand for the gospel. So, 
feel good about the fact that we're reading the whole thing, that we don't skip over stuff, because uh, I know what, I've been at some church services kind of like pick, 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 pick here and there, and don't put it together. But it leaves you with some tough text sometimes. How about this one? For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. I did think daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. That's probably <laughs> doable. <laughs> and a man's enemies will be of his own household. Um, and anyone who doesn't love me more than these is not worthy of me. And as I thought about this, I thought, you know, that really doesn't fit in much with the Jesus that we normally read as we read through the Gospels. It doesn't fit the rest of the pattern because he, to me, is a person of peace, trying to bring people together. Um, I mean, a woman caught in adultery or some leper who was cast off to the side. He's the one that reaches out to those people or the tax collector up in the tree. So how is this that he comes to divide people? Or again, we just a couple weeks ago we read about Jesus raising up that poor little dead girl. You weren't even supposed to touch somebody like that. And here he does that. So there's a real healing presence in Christ. And so where do we come to with this kind of text for today? And I thought about it, and I thought, you know, sometimes when you see yourself, and we're celebrating birthdays today, trying to remember that we're all awesome here, <laughs> that sometimes when you see yourself that way, it puts you on a collision course with some people that don't want you to feel good about yourself. They don't want you to feel loved by God. They're not that loving parent that should be there that we just, you know, celebrated last week and talked about last week. When you sense that you are, as a child of God, or loved by God, it can put you on a collision course that where people don't want you to know that about yourself. They want to have you beneath them. And that was heavy duty in the Roman world at the time, tremendous hierarchy, and people were to know that they were not loved. Uh, Prime Minister of India was in the United States and they still have a bit of a caste system over there and in that caste system you're you know, put down to a lower level. And it's easy for people to slip into that for all kinds of reasons they put down other people. Uh, in Russia they had quite an episode this week, I guess it's somewhat resolved, but uh, the leader of that mercenary group, the Wack Wagner group, as he liked it. Wagner, he's German. So he's a mercenary that goes out and does fighting everywhere. He's done a lot in Ukraine. And then he revolted against uh, Putin at least for 24 hours until they kind of made a deal that he'd go to Belarus. I don't know how the whole thing's going to turn out in the end. But what his objection was that his soldiers were not appreciated for what they're doing. Now they're horrible, but they're doing it frankly to the people of Ukraine but that uh, they weren't given the weapons they needed and that sort of thing. So it put them on a collision course with those who would deny him those weapons or wanted him to be a part of the regular military. Well, uh, this past week we had a medical team for Norma. It is, some people mentioned, hey, I wasn't able to make it. We did put up the orders and uh, Norma's funeral up on our website so you can catch it there if you didn't. But uh, she had just a beautiful uh, carved uh, wooden family tree out there. And I mentioned uh, Abraham earlier to the kids and what a family tree he had. And you would think, hey, this is one person. God looks all around the world. Where am I going to find somebody then I'm going to be able to hold as a father of faith for the world who will be a blessing to bless everybody else? And he finds Abraham. Abraham can't have any kids, so his wife gives a servant girl, they finally have a kid, Ishmael, but then Sarah's all jealous of that, and then when she finally has her own kid, she kicks him out. So there was not this <laughs> loving family that's pictured here. It was a distressed situation. And so how are these two sons, Ishmael and uh, Isaac, to know that they're loved? Beloved, and 
Somehow they get it. Isn't that amazing? They do get it. And they're there to bury their father in the end. Uh, both, both are there. And that's something. The two mothers couldn't get along, but the two, two boys did. And they had a kind of a long view, I think, that, you know, God's with me in the midst of this. And even though we have all kinds of family and dynamics going on, that God's love is there for me. And that's why Jesus says, you know, you can't really receive maybe father and mother. You've got to have the firm foundation that you're beloved by me. And hopefully parents reflect that. Hopefully siblings reflect that. But it doesn't always happen. And so you have to keep that for yourself. And that might put you on a collision course. So they had that for each other. But then Isaac has two kids, twins, uh, Esau and Jacob. They don't get along particularly. They wrestle even in the womb, it said. And uh, Jacob steals Esau's birthright. He has to flee. Now here's a wonderful thing. He's fleeing. He's a trickster. He tricked his dad. He can't see very well. So he, he got his blessing, put some fur on his arm so he can be this hairy guy. Anyway, his father blesses the wrong one, and the brother hears about it, so, you know, off he goes. But there's a stairway that leads down from heaven to him while he's escaped from the family. And uh, you remember the song, We Are Climbing Jacob's Ladder. Actually, he wasn't climbing anything. The heaven was coming down to him. To say that, pushed out of the family by his mom, who was part of this tricking that happened. Not, not by his mom, by his dad, you know. He had to flee his brother. But still, God's with me. And that, I believe, is what Jesus means to say in this text. That sometimes you have to let go of some family dynamics to receive for yourself this word that you are, as Jesus was baptized, heaven's roof open, you're my, my beloved child. That's who we are. And we know that about ourselves. That can be a collision in part of our family. But here comes uh, God's word down to Jacob. He's tricked himself. He's a trickster. He gets tricked by Beban. He <laughs> marries the wrong gal. I don't know all these stories in the Bible. So anyway, uh, he finally marries the right one, and then he loves the kids of the Rachel. Doesn't like you know, Stephen's kids all that much. But in the end, he is able to come back and to reconcile with his brother. And he wrestles with an angel before that, and uh, and they they are together. So sometimes, you know, there can be some reconciling in families, and maybe wrestle, wrestling through the night to get there. But, um, but again, the firm foundation has to be that stairway that comes down to us and not maybe some garbage that our families maybe are spewing out at us or other people might be spewing at us. We have a long view. Now I mentioned uh, Jacob having two wives and they had 12 sons. They didn't all get along. Now, <coughs> Anyway, they sell off poor uh, Joseph, but he becomes second in, you know, Israel, and he's able to save his brothers from famine. So again, it's a, a beautiful thing that happens, and this is what Joseph said. I, th I always thought this was really beautiful, and maybe uh, something you can take with you too is that you meant it for evil. Somebody else wanted bad. They didn't want me to do well. They wanted to put me down, keep me down. And what does Joseph say? But God used it for good. I don't care what you did. God used it for a good purpose. And that's what Paul was talking about in Romans today, that God can take the terrible things that happen in our lives and use them for a good purpose. So they take the long view, and he's reconciled with his brothers. It doesn't always happen, but in our lives, some Sometimes we need to take a step back and we hear all these words and whatever's thrown at us and we need to step back and remember that we're a child of God. So we have that for ourselves. And prayer can help us with that too. And help us maybe reconcile with the people around us as well. 
Doesn't always work out. Cain killed Abel. That was the first pair of brothers. That didn't work out. So, you know, no guarantees. People, there's all kinds of people in the world. <laughs> Carol was telling me about Patrick today, we had, uh, yesterday, at uh, 52, come, was it 50 or 52? I'm sorry. It was 52. It was 52. Okay. <coughs> and, you know, in this life you get all kinds. So here you go. Uh, with a guy, he comes to the pantry, he's got a crumpled up one dollar bill. I mean, you know, picks up a bag of food, but here's your crumpled dollar bill to help with the pantry, you know. And then, you know, sweet, give him what he can. And then the next person is <laughs> going into those bags. We can use some bags, by the way, I forgot to mention that, some state of brother bags. I love those state of brother bags. But anyway, she's picking out of the one state of bag and <laughs> putting it in her state of better bag so she can have a little more. Well, you know, that's the next person picking up that bag is not going to have as much, you know, it's like her. And then here comes a guy, he's a uh, good Samaritan, helped out somebody who was in an automobile accident, he was helping him along I-15, helping him out of the car when another drunk driver came along and hit him. And, uh, <clears throat> He's been, you know, all kinds of medical issues, thought he was going to die anyway. And then he had a couple of girls with him. Boy and a girl. A boy and a girl over at the school here and noticed our pantry. Uh, they're off in high school or whatever now. But anyway, uh, he wants to help, you know. He wasn't able to hang in there for the whole time and had to take some rest. But he didn't leave. <clears throat> came back and did some more work. So, you know, there's all kinds in the world. And so, in this life, we're going to get all kinds of responses to who we are. There's going to be some people that are happy to see us. You know, like, actually, Esau was happy to see Jacob when he finally came back. He runs to embrace him. But there's also people that aren't going to appreciate us. You know, we got Cain and Abel. There are people that are going to hammer away at us and that sort of thing. we got to have that firm foundation where we know we're a beloved child of God and we're going to stick with it. And knowing that, uh, we can confront all the things that come into our lives. Because sometimes, you know, the other big news this week was that Ocean Gate submersible. They didn't even, you know, have the thing certified in any way. It's just pathetic and terrible for those people crowded in there paying a quarter million dollars to die. But, uh, <clears throat> You know, there was just too much pressure. It couldn't take it. So it implodes upon itself as a pressure down in the ocean. And sometimes in our lives, I'll tell you what, folks, and I've seen it, there's too much pressure. You know, too much has been thrown at us, heaped upon us, and you're going to implode. And so you maybe need to get out of that area, or whatever it is that's doing that to you. Recognize you're a child of God. And so don't let that, you know, pressure destroy you. Like Jesus said, you know, be honest with yourself about who you are and your situation. He says what's uncovered will, what's covered up is going to be uncovered. What's whispered is going to be proclaimed from the top of the mountain. Remember this, that you are dead to sin and you're alive to God. And let that make you understand that you are worthy and you're not to be pushed down, 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 down until you implode. To remember that uh, you're worth more than many sparrows. And uh, even the hairs on your head. I thought, well, God's got a few less to count, you know, <laughs> in my head. But, but to think of that, you know, isn't that something? Knows the hairs on her head. Creator of the universe. And like last week, you know, if you're feeling that rejection, sometimes you gotta just shake the dust. Move on. Get it off the feet. Don't fear those who can kill the body but can kill the soul. Fear him who can kill both soul and body. Don't let them kill your soul. You're a child of God. See yourself. When you look in the mirror, see yourself 
at least once or twice a week with the eyes of Jesus. Ah, and then I thought I'd sing this. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's kind of a prayer. You guys know this song? You can maybe sing it with me. I'll sing it once through and then we all sing it. How about that? It's an old hymn. Been around. You probably know it.
in God's abundant mercy, let us offer our prayers for a world in need. You entice your church to speak truth that challenges false notions of peace. Prevail upon us with the good news of Christ's death and resurrection, that we are compelled to share the gospel with all of the world. God in your mercy. God. Under your watch, not even a sparrow goes unnoticed. <clears throat> Safeguard plant and animal habitats threatened by melting great glaciers, rising oceans, and receding coastlines. Amplify the voices of those calling for responsible stewardship of the earth's resources. God, in your mercy. Our world is enduring violence and destruction. Rescue your people in nations experiencing conflict, especially in Ukraine and Sudan. Thwart the efforts of those who show chaos and terror, and guide those working to bring about peace and reconciliation. God, in your mercy. You have counted even the hairs of our heads. Reassure anyone experiencing poverty, homelessness, unemployment, or exploitation of that every life has value. Look favorably upon all who struggle, especially Jeannie, Joe, Eloise, Linda, Becky, Donna, Jessica, Kira, Gloria, Joseph, Carolyn, Brendan, Lucas, and Brooke. Answer us, for your steadfast love is good. God, in your mercy. Even when we experience rejection, your love invites us to new life. Lift up anyone who feels shunned or excluded on account of their gender, race, sexual orientation, gender identity, national origin, or any other human distinction. Make your people one. God, in your mercy. All who have died with Christ also live in with him. We give thanks for Lee Morgan, George Machel, and Norma Burwell, and all the saints whose faithful confession inspired our own discipleship and raised us with them to eternal life. God, in your mercy. Receive our prayers and answer us, O oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us share the peace of the Lord with one another. Indeed, right our duty and our joy that we 
through our Savior Jesus Christ. Though on Sunday overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels in the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
We thank you, generous God, for the refreshment we have received at your banquet table. Send us now to spread your generosity into all the world through the one who is our dearest treasure, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. God calls across the cosmos and speaks to the smallest seed. Keep, bless, keep, and sustain you now and into